guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create a morphing between any two objects in Cinema 4D. So, let's get into it. Alright, so step number one is to start by collecting two different objects that you want to morph. For my animation, I use an eyeball and emoji, so I'm going to use those again. Then, I'm going to hide the second object and try and start centering my starting object, which is going to be the eyeball. Once that's pretty much dead in the center, from there we can put the eyeball into a Voronoi fracture, and this is going to separate it into a bunch of different pieces, which you can start to see when you offset those fragments. It doesn't really feel like there's enough there though, so we're going to go ahead and change the point amount by going into sources and setting it to 200. And now with more fragments, our object has fractured way more, which looks a whole lot better than it did before. Now we can grab a plane effector for our fractured object, and we're going to change it so that it no longer affects the position, but instead changes the scale to minus one. And now that we can see all those fragments disappear, we're going to add a linear field to that effector with a direction of plus y, so that when we drag those pieces, they begin to disappear. That's looking pretty good to me, so now we can start to move on and start animating. We'll go to the start of our timeline and create a position keyframe, and then we're going to move forward to around 45 frames, and we'll keyframe the effector to go all the way down. Now when you go and hit play, you can see that it goes all the way down and disappears, which is exactly what we want. Moving on now, it's time to combine all of these into a null object. We're going to give it a name, so we're going to type into this morph1, then we'll duplicate that and type in morph2. Now morph2 is where we're going to put in our second object, which is going to be the emoji that we were using before. And just before we continue on, you just want to make sure that that's centered exactly where it needs to be. So we'll rotate it a little bit as well, so it's looking directly at the camera. Now we can put it back where it was, and then go into our plane effector, into the linear field, and make sure that you change the direction to minus Y. Hit play a new timeline, you'll see that the animation is pretty much done. The last step here is if you want the spinning effect that I had in my animation, all you need to do is grab both the null objects that we created, and put those into a separate null object. Once that's done, you can then animate it to spin around 360 degrees over the course of the 45 frames, and then your animation will look exactly like mine. If you learned something new today, make sure you leave a like down below, comment if you want to see some more, and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future content. I'll see you next time.